Verse number three, the Bible reads, but neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised, and that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. So another warning about false brethren. So they come in privily, like privately, right, secretly. They don't want to make themselves know they have an agenda to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus. And they're trying to bring us into bondage. So they, they, they start to bring in their damnable heresy and their works of trying to bring us back into that bondage. And it says in verse 5, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. So we didn't entertain that foolishness and that heresy, not even for an hour. And when it comes to the gospel, we're not willing to entertain anything other than what we've already received. I'm not willing to entertain any other gospel than what I've already received. Not for an hour. Why? Because we need the gospel to continue. We need it to, to, to further the right gospel. So flip over to chapter 4. Verse 17, the Bible says, They zealously affect you, but not well. And it, people might have a lot of zeal. You might have people coming in here with just a lot of, a lot of zeal, a lot of drive, real excited, right? But if they're bringing in another gospel, they're not going to affect you well. Just because someone is very zealous, you might see a preacher online or whatever, and oh man, they're on fire and all this and that. I just love listening to them. You know what? They may have a lot of zeal. But if, they've, if they're a false prophet, if they've got a different gospel, a different Jesus, they're not going to affect you well. It says, yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. Verse 18, but it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. So he's saying, it's, you know, yeah, it's great to be ze zealous on a good thing, on a right thing. My little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you, I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. Tell me. Ye that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? So he's already saying, I'm standing in doubt of you. Why? Why is he standing in doubt of them? He's standing in doubt of their salvation, which is why in verse 19 he says, Of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. There's no stronger language that he could use with questioning their salvation than just saying, look, I need, do I, it's like I need to give birth again. Because I thought you all were saved. I traveled, I worked, I labored, I preached the gospel unto you, you got saved. But now you're telling me that you know, you, people need to be circumcised to be saved. Do I need to go through this whole thing again? Because obviously you didn't get it the first time. If you're believing in this works, then now, then, then something didn't stick. Something's not right. That, that's the problem that we need to, uh, you know, that we need to watch out for. And that, that made him doubt is, is their testimony of even doubting whether or not they're saved. 